Well, earlier this month, the International Monetary Fund predicts the global economic recovery will slow over the next year, with growth of 4.6% this year falling back to 4.3% next year. The report is the latest to warn that the world economy is not out of the woods yet, with the Institute of International Finance, JP Morgan and IHS Global Insights all going further than the IMF in their predictions of a decline. A short while ago, Subyuka spoke to Nariman Berebesh, the Chief Economist and Executive Vice President for IHS Global Insights, about this and fears of a double-dip recession. We think that a double-dip scenario only has about a one in five chance of occurring, about 20%. There's significant differences between this episode and what happened in 2008, 2009. The size of the problem, even the Eurozone crisis, is smaller. Uh, the bank exposure is only in Europe, so there won't be much in the way of contagion effects uh, to, uh, uh, to other parts of the world, not to US banks, not to Asian banks. Um, but very importantly, central banks are still in crisis mode. They know what they need to do. If they need to move, they'll move and move quickly. So given that, I think our view is that chances of a double dip are not that great. What we worry about much more is because of all this fiscal austerity in Europe and soon in America, that we'll have a protracted period of very weak growth rather than a double dip. So sluggish growth for an extended period of time is, from our perspective, the bigger worry. And where does the U.S. fit into uh, the possibility of sluggish growth going forward? Because um, the situation fiscally um, is quite uh, difficult, especially when bringing in uh, the health care reform. Uh, but at the same time, uh, corporate America has never looked better. That's correct. The, probably the best news coming out of the U.S. is the corporate finances are very strong. The U.S. companies are sitting on a mountain of cash, if you will. And that almost is the flip side of the debt levels at the, at the government level and, and, and uh, among consumers as well. So it's, it's almost like there's an offset. Uh, households to a lesser extent and, and businesses are saving, whereas uh, the government is dissaving, if you will, running these big deficits. So there's a bit of a counterpart here. So th it is good news that at least parts of the U.S. economy, there's a lot of cash, you know, the, the, the finances are healthy. And that will, in the end, help the U.S. sort of muddle through this this, uh, this crisis, if you will. So when do you think we'll see sort of your big major uh, corporations and companies start hiring again and start generating jobs and getting that money flowing through the economy? Basically, they need to feel confident that the recovery is sustainable, that in fact there won't be a double dip. Uh, I think time is of the essence here. I mean, in the sense that the, the longer this recovery continues, even at sluggish rates, let's say 2.5%, 3% growth for the U.S., the more confident businesses will feel that there won't be a double dip and will probably spend. So I would guess within the next year sometime, you will see businesses spending more. Obviously, China is very important in this turnaround. Um, but at the moment, you've said that China's days of double digit growth are in fact over. Well, China's growth is crucial. It is a very large economy now in the global context. Its size relative to other economies is, is, is increasing. And so China's playing a very big role, increasingly larger role, as a locomotive of growth, especially for regions such as Sub-Saharan Africa. So China's growth is crucial, even if it slows down to, say, only 8% growth, which is high by anybody's standards, it will still play that role and will be very important as a trading partner, continue to be very important as a trading partner for South Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa. And what is your forecast for Sub-Saharan Africa? We think that Sub-Saharan Africa can, can enjoy growth of, say, 4% plus or minus within that range uh, for some time to come. The commodity picture will support that growth. I think the global recovery will support that growth. So we're relatively optimistic about Sub-Saharan Africa. South Africa is obviously the continent's biggest economy, but there are a number of risks coming to the fore at the moment, like our mining industry being in turmoil, uh, power problems, and of course there's the debate around whether or not we should be weakening our currency. What are your thoughts on this? I think in the long run, it probably doesn't serve South Africa that much to have a, a you know, substantially weak currency. I mean, it will help a little bit on exports, but in the longer run, I think you know, more stable currency is probably in the best interest of South Africa. In terms of the turmoil in the mining and the, and the power sector, I mean, clearly these are issues that are going to have to be resolved fairly soon. Because one of the, one of the nice things, one of the nice after effects of the, of the World Cup is a, more confidence in South Africa, great interest in investing in South Africa. And so to the extent that those can be resolved, I think South Africa can become a very big destination for, for global capital flows, for global investment. And that, I think, will, is, will help South Africa tremendously 